Billy Redface, love the podcast. Uh, as soon as I have a need for any of the services that are advertised in your show, I'll make sure I go there. So, okay, thank you. Um, this may not rake. Jesus. I'm dying a slow death working a day job that isn't fun anymore. The money's great. I'm 32 and make a mid-six-figure salary. But like you, I'm not really motivated by more money. I would much rather, okay, I dream on a daily basis. He wrote that all in a capital letters about doing comedy full time. All right, Jay, this guy's making mid six figures. He's 32 years I'll old. I'll trade you. <laughs> you can have, I got, I got 45 minutes. You can take it right now. Give me the mid six figures. I'm gone. Uh, stand up, improv, sketch, performing, writing, producing. I'd love to do it all. I'd love to do it all, all the time. But the flip side of not being motivated by more money is being motivated by the fear of not having enough. See, I'm a nervous, as you would say. Uh, well, dude, once you're making mid six figures and you're 32 years old, you're not nervous. You're you're also kind of rational, okay? You you like that's why you you try and start as young as you can because you're stepping off a curb rather than a fucking three story building at this point that you own and have tenants in. Um, I didn't start till I was 31. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. And what's his face retired. Um, Dangerfield, and he came back. I'm not discouraging the guy. I'm just saying that he's not. But I wasn't making <laughs> mid six figures. I don't think I would have j- jumped off the curb for that. Right, man. but he, he's look. He, he's he, he's not nervous. Is what I'm saying. He's thinking rationally. So, anyways, he goes. See, I'm I'm a nervous cunt, as you would say, with the New Jersey mortgage, aka the land of high taxes, bills, and a three year old daughter. I can't bring myself to cut and run from the corporate country I work in. My wife and I have no debt other than the mortgage. Dude, that's great. <laughs> That's great, man. And we generally live below our income level. That's also great. Those mm-hmm. are two things you need to do. Which people don't do anymore in this yeah, country. You really need to do that, man. Uh, but I don't think we live at or below the income that we'd have if I stopped killing myself on a daily basis by commuting to a fucking computer instead of commuting to a couch with a laptop and a giant cup of coffee just to work on comedy ship. I love shit. I love how he's, he's romanticizing being a comedian, yeah. although he's kind of right. Um, it's more coming out in your pajamas with a hangover, trying to figure out how to get that exactly. fucking whatever you picked up that night out of your hotel room. <laughs> and then going downstairs and having a greasy breakfast to fucking, I don't know. Anyways, I have no frame of reference to know how much money could be made or how long it would take to make it. And I'm scared shitless that I don't have the talent or the balls or both to actually get paid to make people laugh. In spite of believing in blah, blah, blah. All right, my friends tell me to practice, practice the comedy shit. Dude, I can get right to the end of this. All right, this is what you got to do. You do both. Don't quit your fucking job. This is what you do. Write five minutes of material and go sign up for an open mic and try stand-up comedy. Okay? That way, if you go up and you eat your fucking balls and you hated it and it was humiliating and you don't ever want to do it again, you're not going to be sitting at your cubicle going, what if? You're going to be like, no, I tried it. I, I, I bombed and i didn't like it now if you go down there and you go up and even if you bomb but you still like it you know which is a major fucking sign if you bomb and you still like i want to come back then just keep coming back Mm -hmm. and keep doing that and just balancing it out and i but i you need to have a major talk with your wife and just say listen this is going to kill me if i never try this i but i promise to you i promise you that there's going to be no let down me as a husband or a father here. Uh, but there will be, you know, a couple of nights a month at first just to see. I just have to know. OK. And um, then if she goes, well, you're making mid six figures and blah, 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 blah. That's when you start pointing out all the morons that you listen to on podcasts that are making fucking money in this business. OK. And I'm telling you, dude, if I can do it, anybody can fucking find a place um, well, not anybody. You know what I mean. If you have any sort of fucking talent, you can do it. Jay, I've watched there, you. There I've is one you. thing I'd I've like watched... to say Go ahead. real quick before you say that, because he's mentioned money a couple times. Like he's like, and then I don't know. I don't have any frame of reference of right. how much money I could make if I could make any or da 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 da. The one thing is, you can't. I don't think you can worry about that going into it because. You know, you see right. them every day in the clubs in, in L.A. And, and everywhere else. 
within five or seven years, you could be a millionaire. And then you yeah. know what? Five or seven years after that, nobody wants to work you. I mean, cause it's a, it's a, it's but a, that, but then that, and that, different... and that, but that all goes down to what he was talking about. And it goes, goes all down to that living within your means, paying down your house, not carrying sure. credit card debt. Like, dude, I, I these fucking people doesn't like, mean like, that you, you could be smart me? doing you know that and then me? still not there's people, make a dime there's, five there's, years after you were making a million. You know what I mean? In right. this business. In this business. But there's people in the NFL, in the NBA, and in show business with their own TV shows living paycheck to paycheck sure. because they're doing – the exact same fucking thing that you do just at a much grander scale. And everybody goes, how the fuck could you fuck that up? And, you know, most people saying that are doing it at their, le- at their level. Now, it's look, if, you, if you're not making any fucking money, I get living paycheck to paycheck. But if, you know, you don't need that extra pair of sneakers. You don't need another flat screen TV. You don't even need a fucking TV. There's ways you got to get out in front of it yeah. if, if when you're young. You got to start building up a fucking nest egg and you got to, Get on the internet, read some books, figure out how fucking evil the game is so you at least know how it's played so you can, like, take on as little water yeah. as you can and you can fucking stay afloat because, because you know, there's a lot of people want to do other things and they, they just got a ball and chain yeah. around their fucking neck and it, financially and they, they just got themselves in this thing. So if you're in that situation, just immediately start fucking... Dude, I, I would have a yard sale and just start selling shit, downsizing my life. And if I had to take two years off from fucking living the, the American dream and just paying myself down and getting out of that fucking debt, I would do it. And I would start over again because that shit will fucking keep right. me up at night. So, and, I mean, this guy talks like he's like, you know, he is good with his money and everything. But, but what I'm saying is like, just be aware of the, the idea of the money of it isn't why – because – Making mid six figures and what he's doing, 95% of the times, you can't go backwards. Usually, well, probably what he does for a living, at once he hits 150 a year, the next step is 165 to 200 a year. That's not the formula in stand-up comedy. You can make 150 two, right. three years in a row, and guess what? By year four, you're making 45. No, but this is the great thing about stand-up comedy, though. Is... Or you can make $2 million. No, but what's, what's great about stand-up comedy, though, is you're never unemployed. True. You're never unemployed. You're never employed. Unless <laughs> no, but unless you you want to, uh, unless your ego gets in the way, where like say you know you were selling, selling out clubs, you know, so you're just coming in doing Thursday through Saturday. I'm not doing the Sunday show. If it starts to taper off and they want you to do the Sunday show and you refuse to do it, you start doing that shit rather than being like I got to get it going again. Then then you can get yourself in fucking trouble. But like, um. You know, I don't know how actors do it. I don't know how musicians do it. That shit's fucking hard. But being a stand-up comic, once you start, you know, you've established yourself, you've made a name for yourself. If you never take your foot off the gas pedal and you just keep pushing yourself and you keep doing that, like you, you, you can have the closest thing to job security. But yeah. even in his world, dude, like they could downsize, they sure. could fucking kick yeah. him out, and no then doubt. he then he's at that weird age. So, dude, this is my advice: don't quit your job, but I would definitely just start doing it. And there's nothing wrong. If you always keep your job and you just do stand up because you like doing it, or you start a sketch group with your friends and just have fun, um, and don't listen to any other comedians who are saying like you're taking my stage time. It isn't their stage time. All right, it's an art. It doesn't belong to anybody. It it's supposed to make you happy and other people happy when you do it. So that that's what I would do. All right. So good luck to you, sir. You're not a nervous cunt. Okay, <laughs> you're a fucking normal human being. Stop being hard on yourself. So there you go. There's the podcast for this week. Um, like I mentioned, uh, me and Jason Lawhead, we're going to be at the Boulder Theater in uh, Boulder. I believe that's the name of it. I can't even wait to say that word when I get there. Isn't that the That's like a voiceover's dream is Boulder. That yeah. can go from like a that beer a commercial name. all the way to like a murder mystery show. Like in that quiet town of Boulder, right. it was murder. <laughs> or you could be like, you know, when we were the terrible. Rockies of cold water, Boulder. You know, like you ever watch that? You ever watch that shit when they would sit there and? Uh, I love those murder mystery shows. Yeah, and they sit I love there, that. and that guy just goes, you know, just be like, you know, I want to do that. It was a quiet town. That's my dream People job. Were, the gazebo. <laughs> yeah, that's they my had Fourth of July. Yeah, but the underbelly. Oh, I want to do that every day. Blah, blah, blah. That's all you do. But on that you, you, quiet yeah. night. The down to the murder. You know, I love that stuff, dude. This wasn't supposed to happen in this town. <laughs> a town where they keep the doors unlocked at night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you knew your neighbor. People sat on porches drinking mint uh, julep. Yeah. 
Boulder's the perfect name for, oh, that's a voiceover dream. All right, Bold, dream. Boulder, Colorado, September 4th. Pikes Peak Center, Colorado Springs on the 6th. Look for me and Jason. We're, uh, we're going to be looking for a tailgate. If you guys have any information, if you, guys, if you throw it down and you do it right, and you got some extra brisket or something. Uh, and I'll be cheering for the Broncos because all the years I cheered against them when they were playing the actual Browns. Now they're playing the old Browns who were in my division. And I'm, I will, I will definitely be cheering for the Broncos because I've been so mean to Peyton Manning over the years. And now you get that thing where you're getting sentimental because he's in the final yeah. third. And then you, you, you don't. That's like Doctor J. I didn't hate him as much. Magic. Yeah. Same with me with Michael. Him. Jeter. I hated Jordan because he killed hated, us. And yeah. then as he got older, I'm like, ah, I'm gonna miss that guy. Yeah, I miss seeing that guy. Yeah. So the Peyton. I've never had with LeBron, but I miss. Um, dude, if LeBron, they talk about LeBron. Go, he ain't coming back to Cleveland. No, going to the Lakers. Oh, I know. it's a joke. Over dude, there, if if, the, if he goes to the Lakers and that championship is celebrated, then you know what I want. You know what? You know what they should do? They should literally have like. The pregame for that should literally be like eighth graders playing first graders in tackle football. <laughs>